Pressure is a tricky Excel interview problem. Well, let's make it two problems. Here I have got all the order information for our chocolates. So I have got a date and the customer who placed the order. And I would like to know how many of these customers are placing a repeat order in seven days and who they are. That's the first part. Then I would like to know of the customers who placed orders in April 2023, how many of them placed a repeat order in 14 days or two weeks? So how would you answer these problems? Pause the video here and give it a thought. Let me show you my answers. First up, I'm going to calculate for each customer when is the next order date. So for example, here Marketplace Express has placed an order on 1st of January 2023. Their next order came up in 4th of Jan 2023. So right next to this, I want to print 4th Jan 2023 because that is their next order. And to calculate the next order date, we just have to calculate what is the minimum date excluding this particular date for that customer. And here we can use the min ifs function in Excel. If you are using an older version of Excel, you may want to try a different formula like an array formula to solve this. So min ifs of order date, criteria number one is customer has to be this customer. And then criteria number two is order date needs to be after this particular order date. As our data is in a table, we just use the table references and everything works out nicely. When you hit enter, we are going to get all these dates. So here we can see that Marketplace Express, we get 4 Jan 2023 as the next order date. What happens all the way at the bottom? For example, here on 1st of June 2023, we got an order from bargain buyers and there has been no other orders after that date. So we will end up with zero for any orders where there is no future order placed. Now that we know when the next order date is, we can calculate the gap between the orders. And this is equal to this date minus that date and we'll get the number of days between orders. For example, here is one customer, Foodlandia, they have placed the next order after 70 days. Let's check whether this works correctly or not. I'm going to go to the bottom and then we can see some negative numbers because this is zero. Anytime we don't have a future order, the gap to next order becomes a negative number. So we'll adjust this by saying if next order date is equal to zero, then this needs to be a large number like 999 else the gap to that order date. And now we would have a very large number like 999 instead of that negative number. All right, now that all the data is here, let's go and answer the questions. The first one is how many customers place repeat orders in seven days and who are they? We can use the filter function and then say orders customer name, orders gap to next order is less than or equal to seven. This is going to list all such records and we can see that some names like fresh finds repeats. We can send this filter output to the unique function to extract just unique records of that. And then let's just sort this A to Z. So here are all the customers who placed at least one repeat order in seven days. We can count them using the count A function, count A of this spill range. And we have got 69 customers who placed at least one repeat order in seven days. And here is all of them. Now here is a little bit more complicated version of the same problem. Of the customers who placed order in April 2023, how many of them placed a repeat order in at least two weeks? We can extract the repeat customers using filter orders customer. And then we need to know order date is in April. So we can send this to month. Month of order date needs to be four. We don't have any other data other than 2023. So we don't need to check for year. But if we have got multi year data, then you need to pass another condition for year also. This is going to list you all the customers who placed an order in the month of April 2023. 
first up let's make this list unique through unique function and then sort this a to z so these are all the customers who placed an order in april so i'm just gonna say so let's write that as the title for this column customers in april 2023 and now I want to count how many times Bargain Barn has placed a repeat order when the original order was in April 2023. Here we can use the countifs function for that. Countifs orders and then we are going to say order date. This date needs to be in the month of April. So greater than or equal to 1 April 2023. less than or equal to 30 April 2023. If you want to parameterize this, you can take these uh, values and put them in cells and link that to the formula as well. And then order customer is the value here. Now this formula needs to go down for all of them. So I'm going to make this M9 hash. And if I just leave it at this point, we are going to get the number of orders placed in April for each of them. What we want is we don't want the number of orders. We want to see for each order placed in April, if there has been a repeat order at all in next two weeks. So we'll count orders gap to next order is less than or equal to 14, which is two weeks. And we'll get that number. For example, bargain basket placed an order in April 2023 and they had a repeat order in two more weeks. That order might be in May, but at least they had a repeat order in place. Many customers had zero, but quite a few customers have four repeat orders, seven repeat orders here like that. So this will give you an indication of all of that data. And if I want to count how many of them are there, how many, we can just say count ifs of this range greater than zero and we had 51 customers with the repeat orders in the month of April 2023. So how did you do? Could you answer both of the problems? In order to successfully answer these kind of interview questions, you need to know various Excel features and how to creatively combine them. If you always struggle with these kind of things, I suggest checking out this video. In that video, I show you an end-to-end -end data analysis scenario and how to solve that using Microsoft Excel. Alternatively, you could also consider joining my Excel school program, which is a comprehensive end-to-end -end advanced Excel course. In that, I teach you how to think about various business problems and solve them by creatively combining lots of different Excel features. Check out one of these two things and I'll catch you in one of them. Bye.